Hello. I've got a bit of a bugbear. B in my bonnet. Can't think of anything else, starting with B. Um, about the terminology that we use for the shapes and designs of guitars. And in this context, I'm talking about the designs that were developed by Gibson and Martin in the most prolific time um, for the development of the guitar, which I would say was between 1900 and um, 1934, as far as flat tops and arch tops, but let's stick with flat tops. What is this? It has a slotted headstock, it has 12 frets to the body, and a large, long, longish body. Well, it's a dreadnought, yeah? It's made by Collings, but that's incidental to this point. This is the original dreadnought. So this is based on the design of the dread, the, um, the Ditson um, largest body. When Ditson went bust in 1929, um, Martin's had all the um, all the tools and the moulds for this shape and in 1931 as people were clamouring and demanding for more volume from guitars and guitars were changing their purpose um, they bought out this they originally called it an OM like the smaller orchestra model um, and they also called it a bass guitar and then they settled down and called it a D1 and a D2, mahogany and rosewood, back and sides. And then it became the D18 and the D28. And then in 1934, looking at that change of purpose of guitars, they changed it to a 14 fret. Now you all know the story of Perry Bechtel, who demanded a 15 or 16 fret to body guitar because he wanted a thin, long neck like his tenor banjo because banjos were going out of fashion in the dance band and jazz band world and, um, and so they wanted rhythm guitars. The, the wider necked bo bodies of the previous largest instrument that Martin made was the triple O 12 fret. I think they brought this out in either 1898 or 1902, something like that, someone will correct me. And this is an auditorium model. In other words, this was designed with this size body to be large enough to play um, finger style instrumentals to a large audience, i.e. an auditorium. How many does an auditorium? Uh, well, infinitely variable but it's not a parlour guitar. Of course, anything can be played anywhere in any style. But let's just think about that terminology, parlour. Martin had sizes ranging from size 2, and you'll see Model 217s around, which are very small guitars, all mahogany, Lovely little things described in their catalogue in the 20s as for general knockabout use. So, but surprisingly, there's a fair few of them still around and much appreciated. Then they had a size one. You hardly ever saw a size one. They, they didn't seem to make many of those, and even a one and a half. But then we went to size O, or size zero, size double zero, known as double O. Um, the size zero was a parlour guitar in as much as it was regarded as something one would play at home in one's lounge or parlour, the back room. And the double O was called a concert guitar or a grand concert guitar, I can't remember now, but it was deemed large enough to play instrumental pieces to a considerable audience. I don't know, perhaps may, maybe 40. Um, uh, something like that. Um, maybe at a soiree, or maybe at a, a, a small, small gathering um, of seated listening um, audience. This one was for playing on stage in a theatre 
or something suitable, right? Without amplification, of course. Now, Gibson's had an answer to this. When they started making flat tops, they made the LO and L1, and uh, the L00. This is a Waterloo, and it's not an exact replica of any particular Gibson, but it's definitely Gibson style. And I would say it's pretty close to an L00, um, although it's pretty much the width of the, the Martin Trebolo. But it's... Um not quite as elegantly made, not as elegantly finished as a Martin, and perhaps aimed more at um, small clubs, um, juke joints, things like that. Um, and it came about and seemed to find a home in in a more slightly more budget area and definitely for um, the blues players and the ragtime players and things like that. I think Martins were all a bit always a bit more expensive than the Gibsons, but they had a similar range and um, very suitable for purpose. Was it a parlor guitar? Maybe. But don't let's call everything that isn't a dreadnought a parlor guitar. For the triple O that turned into the orchestra model that has become very popular, the OM guitar now, strangely enough for finger stylists and blues players, was really designed with a thinner, longer neck as a rhythm guitar to um, uh, aimed at the, um, the same market as Gibson Archtops. Of course, it lost out on that, and it was discontinued so, so, soon after uh, 1929 when it was first in, um, marketed. I think it was um, 31 or 32 that it was discontinued, and wasn't reintroduced until some time later when a gentleman called Schoenberg started um, looking at them, modifying, and then building them in the image of the original orchestra model. But it had that thin neck. A rhythm neck. Dreadnoughts. Let's go back to Dreadnoughts because I want to talk about the Gibson version. I don't have a J45 or an advanced jumbo or anything like that. The only large body guitar, five inch depth, that I have is Santa Cruz made in the image of a Gibson Roy Smeck, which was designed, as was the Dreadnought originally, as a Hawaiian guitar. The first Martin Ditsons were, were um, provided with alternating nuts, a Hawaiian nut, so you could raise the action and play it Hawaiian, or you could take that out and put an ordinary nut in and play it um, a, a Spanish style. Wide fingerboard, one and seven eighths, what we now know as a wide fingerboard, one and seven eighths. Um, this was supplied originally, or well, this design by Gibson's with a two inch or a two and a quarter wide nut, and certainly not dual purpose. But people like Jackson Brown and others um, found that it had a certain tonality, and most of the available ones have been converted, a neck reset to change the angle, and, um, and a much thinner neck, albeit still, usually they should have um, a 1 and 13 sixteenths or a seven, 1 and 7 eighths nut width. That's arguable, of course. But this is a jumbo. In fact, any guitar design that has a, any Gibson guitar design that has a prefix of J, the J stands for jumbo, and it's a jumble. Jumbo, it's, it's not a dreadnought. Because a dreadnought is a Martin design. Whether it be 12 fret or 14 fret, it's a Martin design. So it's a bit like calling um, uh, a car a, a Chevrolet Mustang or, um, or a, 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 a Vauxhall Mondeo or um, a Ford. I don't know American um, cars, but you know a, a, 
a Ford and use a Chevrolet or a General Motors type um, name. So it's, it's just not right. And that's my little bugbear. So if it's a Gibson style, it's a Jumbo. If it's a Martin style, it's a Dreadnought. If it's a small body Gibson, it should be called an L00 or whatever it resembles mostly. And if it's um, a Martin, smaller than a Dreadnought, it's a treble O, an OM, or a double O, or an O. And the only ones that are really parlor guitars might be the size 2 and the size 0. That's all I wanted to say, I just wanted to get that off my chest. So, I hope you agree. Please leave me some comments here or on the Acoustic Guitar Forum where I shall publish this. And uh, let's, let's have a good old debate about it. Thanks a lot. Bye.